where the lanes are settling in for Origin. And Flash Wolves has got to be really happy with this draft so far. They pretty much have nothing but comfort for the yep. people that are playing these champions. And not only did they get comfort, they also got counter picks in a lot of situations. Nar is seen as once he gets ahead, a counter to the Darius pick. Morgana has been spectacular against Alistair so far. At Worlds is one of the reasons for the fall off. And counter picking a mid lane against the Whoa. ball isn't something that is actually that easy to do. Unless the Nivea is the counter pick that no one ever knew about except for Froggen. So <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. Peke running. The old graph. Yeah, uh, counter picks in mid lane. Nivea, 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 Nivea. When you get to a Nivea, flying. No counter pick there. <laughs> This is going to be interesting. So Origin, the only bands of picks they got to really spend here is that third Lulu band of the first pick, Darius. All they've done as far as options was limit stake down to a NAR. Everything else, Flash got to pick whatever they wanted. But I mean, look at Origin. They have such a beefy front line. Darius combined with Gragas and then Alistar support. Then that requires two heavy damage dealers. I don't yeah. think Anivia Sivir really suit that role. They can ramp up a lot of damage over time in fights, but it's rough. Yeah. Well, even in Nivea, you have to kill twice. If we're trying to think of Maple, who has carried multiple games on the Blanc so far, group stage, blink, like destroying someone at the start of the team mm -hmm. fight, really hard to do here against a Spell Shield, an Egg, an Alistair, a Gragas, and a Darius. Like, he doesn't have very many good targets to hit. Yep. And in that way, Origin has picked a pretty smart team. And that's what's weird about those, then, is then it puts even more onto NL shoulders. Maple can't burst almost anyone. Okay, we know that one, but you still got this Jinx who's putting the highest damage per minute of the entire tournament. So maybe it's a lot on NL. We'll see if that happens because guys, we are getting ourselves into game one of the quarterfinals. And you, as always at home, are part of the experience. Tweet at Lolis with the hashtag FWN or hashtag OGWIN. Let us know who it's gonna come down to. Of course, this is a best of five. A team has to destroy three Nexi over the course of the series to win the whole thing. So as we open the first game in London, let me hear you one more time. We are into game one of the quarterfinals. And also for the fans as well as the viewers at home, make sure you're conserving your energy for this matchup. So don't do this. They didn't get if the you're behind your te hey. television right now, don't shout. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, this is such an interesting matchup because Flash Wolves and Origin, while they did win in the group, uh, there's a stat called bloodiness, which is the combined kills and deaths in a game. Within the first 15 minutes of the game, the Flash Wolves have averaged 1.6 kills or deaths across all of their games in group stage, which is by far the lowest of any team at Worlds. And Origin is the third lowest at 5.2, which is substantially higher, but still incredibly low. So as far as the first 15 minutes of the game here, uh, we were really wondering what the stylistic mismatches were and how they were going to play out. Yeah, definitely looking at just how slow Flash Wheels approach the game. They don't go for any kills. First spots don't happen until probably after 10 minutes, if I remember correctly. They don't take any first towers. They're a very good reactionary team overall. If you make a play, they have a good reaction. But they're very much so not proactive at all. So this could give you a very stale early 10 minutes. And when we've been watching their games from the group stage as well, Flash Wolves has some negative CS differentials, specifically Stake. He's usually down around 10 CS, whereas Soaz is up around 7 CS. So is Niels, and Peke's been holding his own. But Origin has substantially more deaths in the early game because they're playing their lanes very aggressively and have been punishable by ganks, which will be the question of whether Flash Wolves is aggressive enough to take those opportunities. Soaz, and honestly, if you play it, 10 times, and Ellen sort of should win that lane six or seven times, but they just got outplayed. They didn't respect the fact that Mithy had combo. He didn't even have to use his flash, so he preserved his flash, which allowed him then to turn that gank around. Uh, Karsa got counter ganked by Amazing. Oh, oh my. Face he again. can break the black shield. No, he can't do enough damage in time. Gotta wait for the barrel. Yep. Yeah, they, they needed the to wait for the Gragas barrel to pop, break the black shield, because it's only a rank one black shield on a 21 ability power early game Morgana. Or space out your combo. Still worth 84. Kill the black shield with your W, wait, yeah. then knock. But it's it's tough to do that on stage. Yeah, speaking of that though, players will naturally make more mistakes as the stage gets bigger because the pressure increases throughout this. Flash Wolves beforehand wasn't necessarily expected to win that group. They came into the second day with one and two, maybe not as much pressure on them, but now against Origin on this bigger stage, they were confident in that bottom lane fight and overextended, which is one of the reasons they now have to play from a hole. I'm actually very interested to see how this mid lane matchup plays out. LeBlanc into a Nivea. Seems incredibly hard to land that Q, and I want to know what Pekka's going to do build-wise overall. If he keeps this very slow build, 
or he alters it into more of a teens oriented build, so he's defensive against the LeBlanc, and has more wave clear and CDR to just keep the pressure up. Because if Maple's allowed to roam, he could balance out that early advantage that Origin have acquired so far. Yeah, and the only game we have to judge this off of is when Peke played Anivia against TSM in their first game at Worlds here, and he went the very slow build. Yeah. Peke did a Catalyst into a tier of the Goddess, but it was against TSM, a team that Ooh. doesn't make many moves early on in the game. And as far as the scouting report goes, Flash Wolves has not taken much initiative either. They generally wait for the other team to engage on them and then are very good at reacting. So I would actually expect maybe Peke uh, works in a little bit of magic resist, but I'd expect a slow build of Anivia here as well. Yeah, Rod of Ages into Athenes is a possibility, or even early Athenes, uh, if you farm enough, you can go into Roa afterwards. And so as he's continues to have this uh, push pressure in the top lane, which we don't expect to see in this matchup, and honestly, Karsa should have probably swung around to even that out. Yeah, one of the biggest benefits here for Origin is because they were able to get those kills early. Amazing and the rest of Origin have been able to get some wards deep within the jungle of Flash Wolves. You can see a ward right in the perfect area between the Gromp and the blue buff, which is why Soaz has been so safely able to push up there, not to mention the pink ward he has in the river. Very few areas of attack if Karsa actually wanted to stop that push. And Amazing's already doing it some more. He's got the Raptor buff on him, so he knows there's no ward spotting this in vain. He's making sure everything's the way it needs to be. And he's up on the top side in case there is some kind of dive to be had. Looks like that's not the case. There was Niels on the bad side of a trade. His support is not around, so he'll take it a ton of damage. 200 HP, and now comes the teleports. Peke and Soaz both have them. Oh They're both God. in already. The wall missed, but NL loses his flash as soon as he gets it back. Soaz lands the upper hand. Two more attacks will do it. Sword out to one dead. He's got to bleed to death. NL makes it four deaths, and Origin are incredibly far ahead. A complete opposite of what the stats have shown us. We prepared for this match. We prepared for a very dull early game right now. Amazing dull. Has to it's get away from Maple. Looks like we brought our Prenzel Sharpness because it's certainly anything but dull here. Amazing trying to run out. Maple puts in the Ignite. W will kill him. Under the turret he goes. Flash Wolves get their first kill of the game. Maple's going to have to do a whole lot more of that because everyone else on the team is actually losing pretty substantially. Love the teleport usage by Origin. They are absolutely capitalizing on for Flash Wolves what is a surprisingly aggressive duo lane. Letting them play the Jinx, overpowering them when they push far, and punishing Jinx for the low mobility. In all of group stages, all games combined, Origin got a total of three kills. In this match, they've already exceeded that. They got four, er four early game kills here. Here we see Niels, he gets engaged on, but he can wait. And then he can wait for Mithy to come in and then double teleport is allowing Origin to punish this play. This is the first time really we've seen in group stages that they can punish plays with proactive teleports. When we watched the VODs, Origin was either second to teleport or not teleporting at all, or putting themselves in positions where they could get outplayed by a teleport. This time, they're mastering that summary spell. And every time Flash will try to fight the bottom lane, something goes wrong for them overstepping past an Alistair, getting TP down and behind, and not respecting the double teleport at all is really hurting Flash Wolves here. Yeah, the three kill stat you just mentioned, Krepp, was in the first 10, ten. minutes yeah. of the game throughout all of group stage, so they have surpassed that with a very active early game thus far. And Flash Wolves hasn't responded well. Watching all Flash Wolves games during group stages, you know, they've always actually been a slow team. Second slowest average game time in the LMS. So it's kind of out of character for them to make aggressive moves. Normally they're very good at reacting to aggressive moves and punishing, but that hasn't necessarily been the case here. We'll see how many turrets they can trade back to keep this game close. Well, you're gonna see that trade <clears throat> not gonna happen just yet as the bot lane does get cleared away for a little bit there. Maple looking for an aggressive play. The stun will not land though, Peke. Doesn't get the Q out in time. Mid lane turret's taking plenty of damage, but bot lane's still being sieged upon. And the three-man group is far too much for amazing to deal with. Flash Wolves get their first turret of the game. We also have to mention how hideously far behind NL is. He's gone an Avers Blade and a Long Sword, whereas Niels has completed the BF Sword. Sometimes you get the BF Sword to pickaxe mismatch. This is a BF Sword to a Long Sword, sword to a very small sword. Uh, mismatch. <laughs> That's true, comparatively. NL has to be able to swap around, but honestly, where does he actually go? It is so difficult to push against an Anivia with a blue buff in the mid lane. And if he goes to the top side, they lose even more dragon pressure and pressure on them. Now this is what Origin very often does well, is where they farm well in split lanes. They play the map on three lanes. What they do poorly though, is that they die very often oh trying my. to farm. Well, he should have the egg, plenty of damage there on to Peke. Maple will not take the double damage frostbite there. 
And uh, yeah, you're seeing Maple, the, the one bright spot, the only guy with kills, not even an assist on it, still trying to do work for Flash Wolves. Well, you can see exactly where they're trying to attack. It's very hard to attack an Anivia, but if Maple can take Anivia back to base, then they would have a chance of pushing mid lane. Luckily for Origin, they picked an incredibly potent wave clear composition, which is kind of just a really good way to stall and let Anivia hit those late game power spikes, because even if Anivia cycles down, you still have Sivir, two of the best per position wave clears in League of Legends. Let's look at the mid wave cleared away, and even though Darius and Anivia are back in base without teleports, a three-man dragon attempt here for Origin, there aren't many good wards for the Flash Wolves, and there's going to be no contest. And this is usually where the Flash Wolves trade a turret. Whenever a team goes for a dragon, they would switch to the other side of the map and get a tower, because they're so far behind in this game already. So was really waiting for NL, who's so far behind his opponent. Flash Wolves can't cross map, and Origin are just soaking up farm in every single lane, and that deficit is only going to get bigger for the Flash Wolves here. Jeez, look at that, the preemptive early chompers, and NL runs backwards. He is afraid of Soaz. Well, they are both Flashless here. Should be totally safe for this Darius. Flash are at least keeping up in farm. You look down the scoreboard right there, and actually NL, despite being 0 and 2, actually still has more farm than Niels. So the farm game is keeping it up. It's only an 1800 gold game. That's actually not that big for what the scoreboard might have told you. Flash Wolves, Flash Wolves have the, a, a fighting chance. Problem is, though, that Maple has to look for these assassinations. And as we pointed out in Champs Select already, it is incredibly hard to kill somebody in one go. Maybe twice you can get them, but getting through the Anivia Egg, getting through Spell Shield, Getting through the Gragas and the Darius' health pools is just almost impossible for Maple right now, especially if Origin is putting decent vision on the left side and the right side, so they don't, don't get surprised and get outmanned. It's going to take a lot of time, and one of the favorite combos for Flash Wolves during group stages was Maple merely bursting someone to death, and then NL killing them with the Super Mega Death Rocket. So having NL in a deficit this early on in the game is so crucial as far as the win conditions go. Meanwhile, Mithy taking up plenty of aggro, walking back safely, and a beautiful explosive cast pulls Karsa back into the team. It's actually Flash Wolves losing the summoner spell. Well, same with Mithy, though. He did, he did ignite. use Ignite on the Karsa, which is kind of what prompted the Flash. Yeah, Mithy, this pick makes sense in the sense that Mithy, in the first 15 minutes, died seven times in group stages overall, just trying to, work, trying to get that vision in. If you have Alistar, you can avoid a lot of these deaths by just popping your ultimate, so... You can see it. He's very confident going in because he knows he always has a backup plan. He still has his ultimate available to do this again. And with a tanky amazing nearby, they can just force the vision in and keep the game on their tempo. Yeah. What kind of moves can be made? Maple already wanted to make a play onto Mithy. Not going to land the chain. Headbutt Pulper has got him underneath it. Spell shield needs a flame chomper. Nothing else done. Yeah, so you can really see Flash Wolves trying to shrink the map here. They have NL and Maple consistently in the mid lane. Now it's going to be on Origin, because Origin typically doesn't like playing shrink maps to 1-3-1 one, one, and draw the game away from Flash Wolves with a Nivea wave clearing in the mid lane. The longer Origin can play this game, the larger their lead will become because they're essentially able to farm all three waves, whereas Flash Wolves is kind of only safely able to farm two. They are actually in a good position to do that, and now they actually have the vision to back themselves up in those positions. Usually. When we see Origin go for very early 1-3-1s, one, one, they lack the side lane vision, and that leads to a lot of their deaths in those side lanes. But this time, because they were ahead a little bit, Soas has a Twinket board right there. So for one minute, at least, he'll be relatively safe. But we need to see that backed up by more sidestone wards placed by the jungler and the support if they want to continue using this strategy. And the thing is, Origin don't have a lot of those deep wards near the mid lane. That area can be collapsed upon fairly easily, actually. And, and you also got to watch the side lane matchups here. Sivir is not exactly a good one-on-one -on -one versus LeBlanc, but that's the matchup being had on that top side of the map. That's going to make it difficult for Niels to really push well. Yep. Yeah. Amazing did just pick up his Sightstone. 14 good. minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Uh, on average, he's picked up his Sightstone at 14.50, which is the second slowest in the group stage. So even with this lead, you can still see the tendencies are staying fairly true for Origin. Mm -hmm. And if that is also true for the rest of the game, expect a lot of split pushing and hopefully better warding for Origin. Because as Krepo mentioned, that has been how they have made mistakes, is they're trying to draw the game to the outskirts, but they are getting punished pretty heavily for it. Well, with a lot of their right there. over in those side yeah, Absolutely, Niels. Sidestepping some more. Pink Ward and Green Ward traded there. You got to see a second ago that top lane was being pushed by Maple first, and then Niels had to collect that wave. So top lane up until the team roamed up to cover the Sivir. 
Maple was getting the push lead there. And the yeah. game has stalled out. The same gold lead has kind of remained stagnant now. Mm -hmm. Mostly due to the matchup in the bot lane. Even with an advantage gained by Teleport, Soas can't push it home because he's still in a counter matchup. And as the game goes on, especially, say, 15 to 25 minutes, that matchup gets the most pronounced because that's when Nar starts picking up these items like that Frozen Mallet and he can keep his opponent at bay. That was exactly the item power spike I was going to talk about and he completes <laughs> it right now. So you can actually see because of this, Origin is starting to group up more towards the mid lane and they're trying to force it onto Flash Wolves a little bit. I will say that Flash Wolves, we made the joke about Stake absorbing in the top lane because he can take a losing matchup and not make it matter that much. Flash Wolves is a team has probably been the best absorbing team at Worlds because they've had to play against so many teams who have beaten them in the early game. Both games against the Koo Tigers. Koo Tigers had immense pressure and Flash Wolves has been able to take these little micro sacrifices to get them to a point in which they can reach power. And that frozen mallet for stake is when they start winning the split push war and is their window back into this game. Yeah, the Flash Wolves are actually comfortable being this much gold behind because they only led once at 10 minutes and that was only a 66 gold lead. And then at 20 minutes, they're usually behind. They've only led like twice in, in the group stages. So if this doesn't get too bad right now, they're actually comfortable playing this game. Just keep your eyes on NL, his positioning with the help from Sword Art, if they can turn a fight mostly around the Dragon. An objective that Origin actually doesn't like fighting around too much. It's true. Oh, we speak about uh, Avian's you know, with dragons running around and an avian whatnot. I want to point we speak out. About avians? We are now we speaking about, a about avians. We are now speaking okay. about avians. Avians is the topic. Yes. I want to speak about a really quick mechanical thing that Pekka does not know about. When you deactivate Glacial Storm, it actually does an extra tick of damage. Then you can use that to last hit, do a minor bit of burst. Pekka doesn't know about this. He's actually waiting until the Glacial Storm regular tick damage kills minions, then deactivates it and actually wastes a little bit of mana doing that. I did not know about this. He got it about six months ago. Meanwhile, top lane fights Soaz, feeling good about basketballs, orbiting his opponent, but Carson now showing up as well, and it's going to be quite hard for the Darius Madison to land one tick of the heel, but Sword Art out of land, the ulti and stakes in there as well. The entire team is top lane as punishment for Orchard taking a dragon. That is a lot of people in the top yeah. lane. And once again, this is an example of a very small sacrifice Origin makes the second dragon as a window to get back in the game. Because if they can now use that pressure to take the top lane turret, they'd be even in gold. But Peke, with some nice cross mapping, Ooh. keeps the pressure up in the mid lane. That's a good wall, but they don't go. NL is alone down under that turret. Amazing doesn't go for the dive. And this is something we've seen from Origin. They play the map open, and if you hit them somewhere in the top lane, they will take something from you in the bot lane. The problem is they don't predict the play from Flash Wolves here very well. Soas could have backed off if he didn't have the vision. He could have respected the vision a little more and just taken the free dragon. But Origin, very often, they want too much, and they have to end up getting punished somewhere on the map. And it ends up being a trade of turrets. Top lane outer goes down thanks to the Flash Wolves gank. The Origin. Persistence, the mid lane knocks one down for themselves. We do have a late tier coming out for Peke, so he is still planning on scaling up quite slowly. That is a recent tier, by the way. Rod of Ages was first yeah. and is nearly completed. It's not super, like it is around 200 stacks, so once he's able to upgrade it, he'll get it. But uh, it, yeah, 200 tiers at 19 minutes out of 750 <laughs> is really, really slow. But we mentioned earlier, average game times. Flash Wolves average 41 minutes, 53 seconds. Origin, 42 minutes, 24 seconds. The 16th and 15th slowest teams at Worlds thus far. So I think he's going to have the time to let it complete. So what you're telling me, Jad, is a 30-minute Raj of Ages is OK in this matchup. It'll max out. <laughs> if you're baying it off Well, Seraph, he already has the Rod of Ages. But yeah. Well, yeah, they stack. There's almost no unique passes in that item. Six oh. row of the dream. Overall, we saw a very explosive opening of the game with NL and Sword Art going aggressive and getting punished twice. One by an outplay, second time by teleport. But as we've been talking on a little bit, the game has been stale. As I say that, we may see some action though. Flash, headbutt, pulverize comes in. Oh. Maple goes oh. back in! Whoa, the massive outplay! Jumps back, Juke Smithy, there's nothing else to do. Beautiful by the Flash Wolves mid laner. In case you didn't notice, Maple is really good at LeBlanc. Uh, basically, <laughs> 2v1s right there. Mithy landed the CC, but he's like, well, what do I do? My AD carry's not close enough to follow up with anything. Niels dies in the side lane yet again. So, uh, Origin honestly needs to shrink this game down a little bit. Flash Wolves is killing them in the top and bottom lane. And Origin needs to work around the Anivia and the team fighting that they have built up in their composition.
Origin just need to improve their warding right now. It was really good at one point, and that's very often when they place all these trinket wards down, because Origin have a tendency to place a lot more trinket wards as opposed to just sight wards. But then once that vision drops, they, they find themselves in the dark with no really follow-up play, and that's exactly what's happening right now, too. They're, just, yeah. they're not making much plays with vision, and then, yeah, Niels gets caught here. He can disengage, but they want the outplay. Yeah, I mean, the fact that the chain landed as Mithy engaged is really what sentenced Niels to death right there, and he used the spell shield earlier on. Uh, that's now the second time Origin has died in either the top or the bottom lane. Um, in the group stages, as far as where the teams had their deaths, it was a really cool stylistic difference. Flash Wolves only suffered five deaths in the top or bottom lane as far as positions on the map, but Origin had died 29 times there. It feels like Origin is continuing to push these sides and, and look, usually suffering some casualties. Flash Wolves finding it yet again, but there is double teleport. Spell Shields, the first distortion. Trying to get Two away, a bunch of board. bards come through, and here comes everybody. Peke trying to get away from this one. Par uh, cards of half health, knockup comes through, but it doesn't do all that much for him. Niels forced to run and hide. He's almost out of health there. So as the front lines forced to run for the rockets. The zap hits so as though, which means Maple can come in for the chain. So as will be rooted for another couple of seconds. Here comes the team. Egg. Oh dear! Poaches an egg as Peke goes down, and Flash Wolves take the kill lead. And that's so punishing for Origin because they expended both of their teleports to try and salvage that play and got a negative result off of that. Flash Wolves has persisted to this point and they look to take the lead with this turret kill. But what a fantastic way of using distortion and mimic distortion there from Maple. He passed over Baron into the jungle, doesn't get spotted. Over the crux, he gets behind Niels. Niels only starts running once he sees Karsa coming out. And because Origins have this spread out play style when they use the teleports to collapse, Amazing was actually still in the mid lane. NL was way ahead of that play. He joined, and once he joined, he turned around the tides in that fight. So Flash Wolves, they're planning their plays together. Origin are reacting with teleports, but sometimes you just gotta bail out and sacrifice one guy. Yeah, I've, I love what Maple's been doing. Moving through the shadows and creating plays for Flash Wolves instead of waiting for Origin to split push them to death. Again, Niels was out of this fight before it really began. And Peke had to use his flash defensively because they both teleported in on the same ward. And Origin, they feel strong, but they don't know that Amazing's in the mid lane. Poor communication. And Nell comes in. He wasn't spotted anywhere on the map, and yeah, he's going to turn on his fight. And look at the spacing from Maple, too. Staying out of Darius's Q range, Stake now realizes that they actually killed Soas already, so he doesn't need to use his ultimate to secure Soas. And then he just hops onto Peke. Peke trying to peel. So these little minor outplays here from Stake just adapting during the fight. At first, he goes in for Soas, realizes that kill's already produced, then he switches to Peke, Flash Wolves pick up two kills. And I want to highlight something that uh, Minor Crystal talked about on PTL this week, about Flash Wolves sort of playing to their opponents, playing to level them, playing almost a, a style that works well. Origin loved to play these side lane pushes, this 1-3-1. One, one. So as got kind of picked by stake, Niels on Sivir is never going to survive against LeBlanc, and Anibia's not exactly a great side lane pusher. They're not even the right champions for a 1-3-1 one, one style from Origin here. Flash yeah. Wolves have matchups for all of them. Yep. Flash Wolves has been so good at reacting to their opponents. Sometimes you can use that as a negative because, you know, they're waiting for the other team to expose themselves. But basically, Origin has been exposing themselves in those side lanes, and that's where Flash Wolves has been able to capitalize. This game may actually hinge near this next dragon fight because instead of the picks being plentiful for Flash Wolves with solo people off, they are now grouped up with an Anivia around an objective. Will Flash Wolves give up dragon number three, or will they actually try and fight this one? We keep talking about how Origin's style is 1v1, but a case can definitely be made to just spread open the map and then collapse with the Sivir and then use that movement speed advantage to make a pick or an engage or a siege somewhere. Because if you look at this composition, a lot of the issues Alistar and Darius face in these fights is getting to their targets. Sivir solves that immediately for you, and then you can really play out these good zone control team fights with Anivia. So they have the tools to turn around a fight, catch out NL. But he's proven to be very position-based AD carry, so definitely yep. interesting to see if this plays out. And as much as we talk about Flash Wolves being a sort of reactive team, they've made a lot of proactive picks. Origin yes. haven't gone for sieges or fights or much of anything, but Maple continually opens the map back up. Dragon's yeah. been up for almost a minute. Origin trying one more time to take it. I feel like Maple's been doing most of the work. He has been the one working in the shadows, and he has been the one split-pushing for the team. 
bit. Backwards chain is not the best way to start this, uh, but they do have a Nivea zoned out. This could be a fight. Attempt of steal for Carson will not happen. Sorted out a half health. Black shields himself. So Maple goes in. Chain's only myth. He could re engage his pop seals and flashes to leave headbutts and minion to go out as well. Sivirot was already popped in his timed out. And now Stake will look for a slow one auto attack. Would slow chain Ew. Mithy. They're going to go for this one. The chain will land. Headbutt won't create enough distance. And that will be a kill for NL with the super mega death rocket. And on the topic of controlling this split push that OG does. Rek'Sai is a fantastic pick because you can make your jungler an impromptu wave clear on the other side of the map and just ulti him in. Karsa came in with a tunnel, joined the fight, and once Origin was disrupted, they were too afraid to fight. They felt a need to regroup and then flash those gap closes and range CC yeah. punished them. Well, specifically in that fight, Peke was trapped in the mid lane because the push was being threatened while Origin was able to get the dragon. So I actually think they got a decent amount of value picking up dragon number three and only having the one casualty in the Alistair, yep. I think is an acceptable cost for Origin in the long run. Uh, even so, it, it does appear that they've kind of lost control of this game and now their win condition really is uh, more centralized. They need to be able to take Dragon 4 and 5 as well as try and control Fog of War around Baron, of which Origin has really poor ward coverage where they need it right now. Yeah, it showed Flash was a way to win these fights. You really want to repeat the same scenario over where you have Maple on the side picking people off, Karsa going in and then zoning Origin and then picking up the targets with repetitive CC while keeping NL safe. Whereas Origin, they just want to group up, get a really good CC chain coming. Gragas and Alice are combine their efforts to really lock somebody down and then meanwhile you use your tankiness to your advantage so that Maple can't really go one for one in that trade. From that point onwards, Origin do win the fight. We'll see if that kind of team fight can happen then at the front line holds and... They can deal with the two and a half threats here. Double teleport is up, but of course, so is Stakes and so is Karsa's ultimate. And keep in mind, there are kind of two teleports per team here as far as matching map movements. A great find and a Peke. Chompers underneath. Not good for the Anivia. Pops the egg, and now here comes the follow up. Has nowhere to run. Eggs don't seem to roll uphill. Peke goes down seven to four for Flash Wolf. Binding to chain to chompers is just no escape once they're getting hit by this first CC. And Origin is just not grouped at the right times to keep this Flash Wolves composition at bay. Yeah, just not respecting the range of these uh, soft CCs following up by hard CCs. Pekka had Flash available that he could have backed out. He can also put his ulti down and just walk further away just to avoid getting hit. But again, NL opening with a beautiful zap there and then lack of respect for Pekka, it cost them a tower. That's turret number five. Flash Wolves have knocked down two of the three. Two, two turrets now in the entire team. Sitting up in the top side of the map now around Baron, around that recently dead red buff. And yeah, lights going on here for Origin. No wards around Baron whatsoever. Yeah, there is an upgraded sweeper on Karsa and on Sword Art. There is still a pink ward in the inventory of Stake. And honestly, Origin just hasn't been in the proper position to get the wards up that are necessary. Amazing has a very small window now, as well as Mithy, to get these defensive wards up around Baron area. Such a critical time. They this is Karsa. actually, for Flash Wolves, this is the cost of taking that second turret. They think it's worth it, but they've kind of lost a little bit of control of the jungle here, where with the way Origin is being caught out of position, Origin needs to set up shop here and get a pick of their own, because they are getting completely punished by Flash Wolves. They trade the Baron control for pushing the bot lane by stake and also getting a base time for all their members to spend the gold. So in that sense, Flash Wolves, they lose a bit of the map, but they gain some potential momentum down the line. We need to see if they can actually deny enough vision here from Origin. Because Origin, they're fine with losing the map as long as they can sink in one or two wards on this Baron area and just prevent the Flash from doing clean Baron. Because if they collapse, they have a fantastic team to collapse on that Baron area. This Whoa, how about getting collapsed on right there? Anivia melts, Maple gets another one. 4-0 and 4 for him. Now Mithy caught up, has to pop the ulti, but does he really even get away with this one? Low health does walk out. A lot of ultis burn. Salty. Blocks. Amazing blocks it. Uh, I think we're seeing here Flash Wolves on their very comfortable champions. And when we swap sides of the map for the next game, that might be what Origin has to go off of. The blue side is a huge advantage in this particular matchup because of the comfort that Flash Wolves has, more so than it would be for even a normal team. Because when Flash Wolves is at their best, it's on this specific set of champions, especially with Maple on an assassin like Maple. Ooh. Like like the long, and we're seeing one. And El just took a giant chunk of damage thanks to the Baron. And Peke's TP is up. There is actually room to make a big play because Maple and NL have to leave the map and heal back up. They could conceivably even Baron and they'd probably get it. Yeah, St Stake can obviously match X Peke there and slow them down. Origin looking for vision here. So many wards though in the area still, so Flash will we'll play with perfect information. And mid tier two is the target. Origin go for the much safer choice. 
that does go down. Origin keep the game within 3,000. Dragon up in a minute. The flash rolls have shown they have broken this game apart. Nice slow. It's just... There it is. They look for the play, and NL Black Shield comes in before explosive cast cam, but Soas trying to front line for the team. Amazing, incredibly low. One last rocket does it. The Stay flanking. Well, unfortunately, the team can't join yet thanks to the Inhibit Crystallized, so Snake will just buy some time with the Frozen Mallet. Undeterred, though, keeps the CC going towards Mithy, and yes, these guys are going to chase. And Nibby stops it. And yeah, we're starting to realize why NL actually does so much damage, because his zaps are on point. Every single kill so far has been started with either one or two consecutive zaps landing by NL. That ability is pretty hard to land. He just slows them down just enough that they don't want to flash out because they don't want to waste it. But he can rack up a couple of hits. Then when they do flash out, it's very often too late because they just chase and then he gets the kill. This is the big play though. Dragon spawns up and Origin knows Flash Rolls want it. So they start away at Baron, but missing one sweeper. Don't kill the last ward in the pit. Flash Rolls know if it's a bait. It's such a hard play for Origin to set up right now because of the amount of vision amazing they need to clear. Gotta go for it. Yeah, they don't walk in with Mithy. Right now, Amazing would have an upgraded suit, but he's been dead, so this is in vision of Flash Wolf. They're can trying feel, to collapse. The they gotta finish coming. it. Amazing can jump over the wall. Who's gonna win this fight? It amazing. goes to the red team. That goes to Origin. Here's the battle. Karsa alone in front, absorbing, gets dunked. So as is online, so Maple's down. He's still going. He doesn't get the third as Azonius comes across. He gets some damage on his stake. He how you win a game. That's what you do. You just fall just to the wayside throughout the mid game and then 30 minutes hit, Darius Penikill. Beautiful Zonias by Sordal, but it wasn't enough to stop the power of Noxian Might. 200 attack damage plus, once he triggered that here, he was hitting the outer ring of his Q to heal up and power tank the game. And instead of trading a Baron for a Dragon, they have their cake and they eat it too. Alright, let's watch this again. Amazing comes in, holds his smite here. Barrow, and then smites at the same time. Stay can't steal it, and look at Sword Art and where Maple is. They're still joining this fight once it's already yeah. hopped on. Deals, he, with his heal, survives long enough to deal some damage, and then run out of the fight. NL is late to this fight, and specifically, Maple actually got picked off. He this wasn't stun? sneaky enough on the LeBlanc. The stun from Peke, just to set up Soaz for all of this power. So oh actually pulls God. him out of Mifi's combo, but that, that little stun there coming from the side from Xpeke, that bought two hits that Anel could have done in this fight. Those two hits were enough. If you don't have, land them, Darius on Soas's pick there can chain heal from leading those Q, and then suddenly he stays alive in that fight. So if Peke missed that stun, this could have been an entirely different fight. Yeah, I think this also speaks to the fact that Origin was really far behind, because after a panic kill, Baron and Dragon, they're still up only 1,000 gold, but I think they do have a better team fighting composition as we saw in that cascaded Baron fight. So now, let's see how well Flash Wolves can repel this Origin push. We're gonna try for it right here. Stone of the Wall will not land. Early Black Shield comes in. Now Maple around the back. Doesn't get much done, but Amazing is overcommitted, and he's gonna get picked up. Car so low on the backside, so is Sword Art. This time, Flash was have an L in the fight from the start, and then they have Maple distracting on the side. So there's two ways to play the fight. Either you focus on one guy blowing him up for the reset on Jinx, or you just make it so that they can't afford to focus on L, and he just has so much backline damage. That was a really awkward engagement because as Amazing was going into the initiation, Maple had the flank position. So half of Origin had to go back to respect Maple, and instead they lose Amazing, uh, which is better than the alternate of Maple basically killing Peke and then losing the whole fight. Mithy really trying to keep Maple on the backside. Of uh, course, the ult out of Mithy, but it's a low health bar. Ooh, they nearly catch Peke with the rocket. I think that's push done. Yeah. Mithy's job in this fight is pretty much goalkeeping. He has to keep Maple away, intercept that distortion, either with a W or a Q. He's doing some damage here. Look at that crit, though. It's still a 4v5. Keep in mind, Flash Wolves do not yet have the Mega on our ulti, though, and not enough damage comes out of Maple. Sword Art also missing Flash means no engage, despite the fact that Amazing was back in base off of respawning. And as you said, push up. Yeah. I think this kind of goes to show how far this game is from a natural conclusion. With the Baron buff, Origin couldn't even 5v5 siege a middle turret. Normally, it's the <laughs> inhibitor defending turrets that are hard to take with Baron. The one that they just got pushed back on is the easy one. Yeah. Origin as a team never use Baron to end the game. They use it to break open the base. That's when they take down a lot of these tier 3 towers. But right now, they're having issues even getting past tier 2. Yes. Against a team that plays late game Jinx, has an AD carry with the highest damage in the entirety of group stage, well surpassing any other Jinx players even 
in that regard. So we go on with this and we get a Zeke Slater on coming out of Sword Art. NL could potentially start soul carrying these fights. And that is next. You can see the amplifying Tome in Sword Art's inventory. I would bet you that is going to be the incredible AD carry empowering Zeke's Harbinger. A couple thousand gold away from that one. We'll see if it comes in. They're the trying to get that pick on NLE. No, he has no flash. Black Shield in, and Karsa front lines for the team. Buys a whole lot of time. Flash the way Sword Art also buys a lot of room, but Soaz has reached the back line. However, Amazing got picked off. It's a one for zero so far to Flash Wolves. State goes back in. He does have the ult if he rebuilds Meganar. Flashes for the slow on Peke. NL wants in, gets chunked out by a boomerang. Still hitting Peke, though. There's the zap. That's There's it. the hit. He's an egg. That's going to be a two for zero to Flash Wolves. And look at the beautiful zoning. Karsa yeah. goes in with a three-man knockup. Then Sword Art just positions himself as a blocker. Just presses ulti and zoning. He doesn't care if they walk out of his ultimate. All we need to do is keep NL alive. And in the midst of all that, Amazing find himself close off and yeah. kill. You could really see how hazardous it can be to chase down NL's Jinx with the wet rest of Flash Wolves being able to protect him. Black Shield, the knockup from the Rek'Sai, as well as the flanking from Maple, plus Frozen Mallet on Stake. He's not really using this offensively. People are, like, Sawas is trying to run at the AD carry. Stake's just hitting him with that Frozen Mallet slow again and again, and you can tell it is shutting Origins team fighting down. Aside from that one, you know, kind of nice pentakill. Yeah. He gave him 6,000 gold <laughs> power play. But even with a 6,000 gold power play, they're still behind seven on the gold, so. And this yeah. is the story of these games. So like it will be the same game two, three, and four, potentially five. We get more explosion post yeah. 30 minutes. This game was action packed by these team standards up until the first 30 minutes. But by tendencies, Flash Wolves has the bloodiest games post 30 minutes and Origin the fourth bloodiest games post 30 minutes. So really, We've already seen a pentakill post 30 minutes. Well, what on. more is in store as these guys battle This it is out. in store, because here we go. Sword Art Black shields himself, but NL will not get grabbed. Maple's around the back, looks for Niels, doesn't get too much done. And now he's zoned out for a few more seconds. Stake is low, turns into Mega Nar, but it's a disengage. Change in approach from Origin. Instead of looking for the back line, they just pick away at these peelers, at these blockers. So they try and get Sword Art to force, force him to use Zonias or LT defensively to save himself, not NL. And yep. that way, you see Maple try and go for a flank, but he doesn't have the bravado to really combo. He just goes in and out. So not much damage returned from the Flash Wolves. Now keep in mind, as far as playing a disengaged game goes, we are 30 seconds away from Dragon 5 for Origin. They've managed to control that the entire time. And so if they can set up that line one more time, in 25 seconds, they can go for the Aspect. Yeah, right now, Origin's wards are placed around the Baron area. They have triple pink right there, and, but they actually don't have much vision control at the Dragon Pit, so what will Origin choose? You've seen teams trade Dragon 5 for a free Baron and then take their chances at the next one. Origin does kind of hold the cards right here, but they have to be careful that they don't walk into a bad team fight because the Death Timers could end the game. And Origin, they've learned their lesson. Instead of rushing in into their inevitable doom, they've Looks been like kiting a lot more in these fights, but right now, Flash Wolves are rushing down this Dragon. Yeah, and Origin, they didn't have the vision control at the Dragon Pit. They're going to try and trade for Baron, but the timers were desynced by 10 seconds. So how much Baron can they get, and how well can they run away? Last time this resulted in a pentakill, but Peke's running a little low on his mana pool. He has a blue buff. They're just two They're manning it, and it's gonna go down. There's a second bear of the game, and here comes the fight. Flash Wolves on Dragon 1 at least have some stats. Here's the engage. Niels, Niels flashes, flashes for an auto onto Maple. A couple of knock-ins come through, and so has wreaking havoc on the sides. Niels is still safe. Peke lands his stun. Sword Art goes down. Meganar does almost nothing, and Stake is the second kill of the fight. It's two for X Peke. But instead of tunneling on Anel and not being able to reach him, they actually take the composition apart piece by piece from the front. Yeah. Origin wins fight whether either they kite and they kill the front line or they get this Baron buff and they can hit the front line anyways. Long death timers too. It is just Sword Art and Stake, Ooh. but how much can they get off this one? If they pick off Maple or NL, the game could be over, but they finally break the base with Baron number two. And speaking of picking off, if Maple had landed that chain, it might have actually killed off so as it would have triggered the mimicked Q mark right there, but doesn't happen. It's gonna stay alive for now, but it's only a three and a half thousand gold game. Origin didn't get a lot of the last Baron buff. We'll see what else they can get here. And in these slow late game fights with Leandris from Anivia, we'll talk about that later as we yeah. see this replay again. So Leandris on Anivia is great for tank busting. Darius is also pretty good for tank busting if you're going through here. You can tell Origin isn't actually trying to focus the squishies here. They're just trying to kind of play their own back line and just trade who has more damage. Origin has the better tank line, the better protection. So instead of them trying to dive, they are killing frontline. This is the proper way yeah. for Origin to play the team fights 
with their very tanky lineup. You don't want to give NL AoE rockets. Even though he was in rocket form, most of his offensive tools... Hang on, Karsa. Nah, most of his sense. offensive tools were used on a single target only, not AoE. And then Peke, if you have to walk over Leandri's ultimate from Anivia, you will take so much damage over yep. time in these rather slow fights overall. And you also want to make it as difficult as possible to flank on the block. When Origin commits people to the backline of Flash Wolves, they leave themselves exposed. Now they die. They're gonna go for it. Turek goes down, Silver Alt's in, so has the front state. as well. And look at State getting forced out. He is a barrel away from death. Niels gets the kill, it's a 5v4. A gigantic minion line gonna be hard to answer. So as gets a shield. He walks forward, this turret is nearly already dead. Amazing takes a big chunk of his health bar. Rockets come in, that crit would have killed him, but it was only a normal Ooh. hit right there. Another chunk comes through, NL forced to flash over the Anivia wall, but the inhibitor turret is dead and Origin are not deterred. You can see Peke's Leandri's Anivia is doing a number on Flash Wolves. And even though Origin had to kind of make a desperation play to get back in this game with the first Baron, uh, that's a nice Goodbye. pick by Maple. There has been a distinct change in strategy in how Origin plays their team fights that is paying some pretty huge dividends. Flash Wolves not willing to give up, though. That's a big time though. Rexile. Peke is not there. He would almost need to teleport down to save this now, Carson. Okay, he comes up blank. Right, everyone walks away fast enough, but all is well. A death on Mithy, though, is still 35 seconds of Origin having to see the map for now. There's no way they can go for a fight without him. This style that Origin is playing is fine in the current iteration of events. Look at the way they play right now. Stake is the primary target. They just don't want too many AoE rockets on NL. Black Shield gets used early, but because Mithy's playing Alistar, he can afford to do this with the Unbreakable. This gives time to look stun into Barrel on Stake. Barrel even misses because Stake doesn't <laughs> even run. But Mithy's soaking uh. more damage than Stake is. So you're trading support for top laner in these fights, and from that point on, they're winning. But if Flash will finish Zeke's, which I have right Not now. Not even. Oh, they yeah, have it. They just have, have right now. Then this slow playstyle where you leave Jinx untouched may actually come to punish you because we're sitting at, you're looking at 90% crit on NL right now. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, 55% for Niels, and there's double Randuin's Omen on the front line here, so it will be fairly hard to cut through those two. 90 when it pops, obviously. You still need to get the Zeke smoke, but that yeah. takes some time, and you usually get it easiest if you just focus on tanks because they make it a lot easier to hit them, and then you can switch to these more priority targets. Niels is also full build. Sivir does a very deceptive amount of damage late into the game, especially now that the team fights are becoming a little bit condensed. Yeah. The ricochet is hitting many, many targets. If Stake and Karsa want to dive together, Niels gets to hit both of them. And really, this game has been controlled by Origin's ability to take care of. Go. Neil's gonna knock down that tier two turret after all the bloodthirster. He's happy to take a few shots and make sure it goes in. As we go 43 minutes into this one. As expected. Yeah, as expected, of course. Love well, it when a stat pans out. <laughs> What's crazy is Origin uh, have about 11,000 gold roughly in Baron power plays. If not for the Baron plays that they had, they'd be down like 6k in this game. Like their ability to make these calls. This is what Europe is known for, by the way, is taking the Barons when there's a dragon up on the map. It's worked out twice now. Yeah, and Freak, I feel like these teams are such a close matchup against each other uh, that this most of these games will come down Ooh, to very it, bold plays and their execution in those precise moments. I don't think this is a matchup where one team just outclasses the other or consistently makes so many super small movements that they win by a landslide. There will be a lot of back and forth games in this series. And as you talk about execution, stake face oh, X. Oh, geez. <laughs> right before that, though, Maple, he got the black shield. He was ready up to go, launch himself over to all, maybe make a pick. And he had butted the wall as well. And we, I kind of yeah. killed out the entire time. Peke was ready. He had ult Q just to, yep. to prep for it. Either way, we are getting ourselves back into this one. 23 seconds on the next chance for Dragon 5 for Origin. If they get this, they can take Baron during that duration, get both buffs on. There's already two inhibitors dead, so even Flash leaving their base would be hard. Yeah, Dragon 5 is huge here because Origin is actually set up to do so and trying to get in on a zone control the Nivea, who, by the way, has a very timely blue buff, is incredibly difficult. They're trying to pop stakes Meganar before the Dragon fight. That's why you saw Pekka hit him over. But they're now rotated in position. Yeah. This could be an end of the it's game. It's a classic Origin play. Just when you think they're going for a Dragon, they go for your base. The Everyone is switch. ahead of them. Everyone who's ever on a team with this Pekka knows this move. They're already into the base and Flash will go, dude, where's my base? Too late, it's already gone without even getting in game one. Classic Peke Soad shot calling, but it's actually Niels who led the way on that rotation. 
everyone was thinking about Dragon 5, but Dragon 5 only helps you kill the Nexus. Why not just kill the Nexus? I love this bait and switch that Origin pulled here, especially game one in the best of five. To, to win a game in this manner just gives you like a mental blow to the Flash Wolves too, because they, yeah. they were, okay, maybe we, maybe we can get back into the game. Maybe if we get this Dragon. No, our Nexus is gone. Well, that's the thing. I mean, this is literally... <laughs>